क्या वेरी गुड इवनिंग माय डियर डॉक्टर्स सो आई एम डॉक्टर सेपुर कृष्ण मोहन सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दि एड्रेसिंग दि चैलेंजेस ऑफ इंडियन रियलिटी विथ इंसुलिन को फॉर्मुलेशन एंड दिस इज माय फाइनेंशियल डिस्क्लोजर एंड टुडेज एजेंडा इज बीन डिवाइडेड टू थ्री पार्ट्स the management of type 2 diabetes especially in the indian scenario and the introduction of the insulin co formulation and the practical recommendations about the indian insulin co formulation and this is the slide showing the, the the epidemiology of the diabetes especially the indian scenario so 2021 according to the 10th diabetes atlas by international diabetes federation 2021 it says that india has 74.2 million adults they are suffering from type 2 diabetes and this is the the next bar is the projections for 2045 by idf is around 125 million adult population would, would be suffering from type 2 diabetes mellitus by 2045 and coming on to the left hand side you can see one in two the patients suffering from type 2 diabetes are undiagnosed and 8 in 10 people suffering from diabetes they do not achieve the desired treatment outcomes and the pathetic part is the 2% higher average hba1c in the indian scenario is observed with regards to the type 2 diabetic population and 6.47 million deaths are caused by diabetes annually and uh, this is the slide showing the asian indian phenotype and uh, the the indians they develop diabetes at an younger age so it is around 10 years earlier when compared to the western scenario and progresses faster from stages like pre diabetes to overt diabetes and we find the high levels of abdominal fat which is the number one culprit for the increased risk of cardiovascular diseases and deaths and as per as the metabolic syndrome is also concerned and uh, the increased uh, insulin resistance is seen even at low levels of body mass index that is lean type 2 diabetics they also have a larger proportion of insulin resistance when compared to the caucasians or when compared to the western people and the beta cell dysfunction which occurs quite early and rapidly and uh, this is again uh, the the asian indian phenotype you can clearly see the difference between this particular uh, the the two pictograms given here like the cartoon shows uh, the abdominal fat that is typically called the indian tummy that is on the right hand side when compared to this particular this thing so the thin fat indians the the characteristic features of thin fat indians they have high visceral fat they are near normal they maintain a near normal body mass index the lower threshold of body mass index and they have higher fatty mass and lower the the muscle mass and the genetic factors and the low birth weight so the early decline in beta cell mass that is onset of diabetes at young age we have seen there are two entities actually see the type 2 diabetes which comes early that is 10 years early when compared to the caucasians and the second entity the, the most problematic thing and the most worrying issue is the type 2 diabetes in the young that is starting from 10 to 15 years that's it with a family history the way their mother or father or both they have diabetes and the baby will be obese the boy or girl will be obese 
and they, they suffer from type 2 diabetes that is a special entity called type 2 diabetes in the end which we used to see in the Caucasians only the American scenario we used to have this uh, the, the obesity with uh, this particular type 2 diabetes in the end and every day we are seeing in our OPD this particular presentations the type 2 diabetes in the end and the the insulin resistance is very higher this is maybe because of the abnormal adipocytokines and the high inflammatory markers and the characteristic dyslipidemia like the high LDL and the high triglycerides and the low HDL. This is the classical picture of actually earlier it was only 2-2 two, two, like okay the, the HDL was lower and the triglycerides they were high in Indian scenario. Now that the third entity has come, like occasions, we have the high LDLC and the, the typical Indian scenario is high triglycerides and low HDL. And uh, higher uh, risk for the diabetes complications naturally, the increased inflammatory markets and the high cardiovascular risk. The clinical profile of type 2 diabetes in Asian Indians uh, that differs from the occasions. And the complications of uh, the type 2 diabetes mellitus in South Asians. So, taking the parameters, the nephropathy, the retinopathy, the cardiovascular diseases, the peripheral neuropathy and the peripheral vascular diseases. See, differences, uh, uh, they are relative to white Europeans and in the next column is the probable mechanisms. When it is uh, related to nephropathy, we are at an increased risk of developing the diabetic kidney disease actually and the mechanisms might be the more rapid glycemic deterioration and the delay in the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes mellitus and the less robust management of hypertension and the diabetes mellitus might be that is the classical term we call the therapeutic inertia maybe the clinician's inertia or the patient's inertia. Coming to retinopathy, same thing, the, it is, we are at increased risk of retinopathy and uh, you'll be surprised if I say that uh, this is the commonest complication of type 2 diabetes all over the world, that is, that it is, uh, like, uh, it is on the higher side uh, with 96% actually, some degree of uh, retinopathy will be there, either the non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy or the proliferative diabetic retinopathy which eventually leads to the total blindness actually. So this is also related to this, the, the, the more rapid glycemic deterioration and uh, delay in the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes and same thing the, the robust management of hypertension and the diabetes and the therapeutic inertia. When you come to the cardiovascular diseases, uh, probably that includes, uh, see, the cardiovascular diseases includes not only the coronary artery disease or the myocardial infarction, the, it includes uh, even the stroke also. The, uh, the, we are at a very high risk uh, and we don't have the sufficient data actually. To the best of my knowledge actually, what happens in our scenario is, when, when one attack is recorded in the US, or one heart attack is recorded, we are recording four heart attacks here. When one stroke is recorded in the Western scenario, we are recording four uh, in the, the, the strokes actually. That is, we are at a four-fold risk of developing the complications, especially the heart and the, the heart attacks and the, the strokes actually. So this is because of uh, the less use of statins and they have got so many myths so many clinicians and the physicians, they have so many myths about statins, when to start statins and when to stop statins and abruptly the patient also stops statins and uh, the physician also when he sees an LDL like okay it is 70, 75, they ask the patient to stop. All the time the take home message is once you start a statin, start it early in the disease course and it's a marathon run, you need to run for lifetime. So you can never stop uh, the statin uh, abruptly because you have got a very hazardous and deleterious effects of abruptly stopping and uh, again starting the statins. So it's a continuous run actually. And uh, the, the aggressive anti-hypertensive therapy 
is also is uh, they the uh, not not in uh, vogue actually in the native south asians actually and uh, the more uncontrolled uh, glycemic levels and uh, the higher quantum of the dyslipidemia even at an younger age actually the dyslipidemia we think that it starts very late in the life but it starts very early in the life in the in the first decade itself the 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 lipid levels they start rising actually so from 10 year onwards we need to be very very cautious about this they raised the uh, ldlc and coming to the peripheral neuropathy but here they we say that it is according to the the evidence based medicine we see the lower prevalence uh, uh, possibly related to the lower height than white europeans but uh, in day to day practice uh, the commonest presentation of a type 2 diabetes will be like a newly detected type 2 diabetes will be with a, the painful sensory peripheral neuropathy see commonly the the, the, the incidence is somewhere around 30% to 50% it is one of the commonest uh, complications actually and uh, the peripheral vascular disease this is also low when compared to the the caucasians and possibly related to the lower height and the lower rates of smoking than in white europeans and uh, low carbohydrate diet is a common indian reality you all know that uh, you take any part of the, the south india north india east india west india or the central part of india whatever you take the the indians they consume the high carbohydrates you are given of 60 to 70% of their the consumption will be the calories they come from only carbohydrates 60 to 70% that is a huge chunk of uh, the consumption of carbohydrates actually the star study actually the dietary survey in the indian type 2 diabetes population what it said is 61 to 70% of energy intake uh, in Indi- indians uh, is through carbohydrates present in the diet uh, and uh, high carb diet leads to raised postprandial glucose levels raised pro- postprandial glucose levels are always associated with the increased risk of the cardiovascular diseases or deaths and uh, according to the the idca that is the indian diabetes care index uh, they they actually uh, 3 lakh 50000 participants with mean age of 55 plus or minus 11.9 and with a mean uh, this thing is uh, the hb1c is somewhere around 8.56 plus or minus 1.8 percent and then the fasting plasma glucose is like 172.2 mg per deciliter and uh, the postprandial uh, the glucose is 253 and uh, the inference is more than 83% of the patients had a postprandial glucose of more than 160 mg per deciliter and uh, you can see the bar diagrams on the left hand side and the right hand side the left hand side is the insulin naive patients that is the patients who have never used insulin and uh, on the right hand side uh, insulin the patients who are on insulin this is the control of postprandial excursions may be an unmet need of diabetes management in asian population i have told you many a time that okay this uncontrolled ppg is the culprit for for the heart attacks and the strokes and uh, if you see that uh, the, the blue bar uh, is asian and the green bar is non asian so you can see the blue bar and the green bar and the parameters are breakfast lunch and evening meal likewise also the insulin naive and the on the right hand side you can see the insulin experienced also the same blue is asian and the green is non asian the breakfast lunch and the the evening meal you can you can very clearly see that the breakfast the the when compared to the non asian people the asians they maintain the higher uh, levels of blood glucose by 28.67 mg per deciliter and uh, correspondingly the lunch 
सेवेंटीन पॉइंट थ्री फोर मिलीग्राम डेसीटर एंड दि ईवनिंग मील सिक्सटीन पॉइंट वन नईन मिलीग्राम डेसीटर एक्स्ट्रा करेस्पांगली अंड वेन यू कम टू दिस इंसुली एक्सपीरियंस्ड सो दि ब्रेक्फास्ट वेन कंपेर्ड टू दि नॉन एशियन दि एशियन हेव हयर लेवल आफ ब्लड ग्लूकोज बै थर्टीन पॉइंट एट वन पर्सेंट थर्टीन पॉइंट एट वन मिलीग्राम पर् डेसीटर अंड फॉलोड बै लंच इट ईज ट्वेंटी नईन पॉइंट वन एट मिलीग्राम पर् डेसीटर अंड दि ईवनिंग मील थ्री पॉइंट सेवन वन दट ईज सेवन पॉइंट वन मिलीग्राम पर् डेसीटर रेस्पेक्टिवली अंड इफ यू टेक् दि पी वैल्यू इट ईज दि इंसुली नईव इट ईज वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट दि पी वैल्यू आल दि थ्री पारामीटर्स इज वेरी वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट अंड ऐस फर एस दिस पर्टिक्युर दि इंसुली एक्सपोज पेशेंट्स हू आर टेकिंग इंसुली यू दि दि पी वैल्यूज दि ब्रेक्फास्ट एंड लंच आर दे आर क्वैट सिग्निफिकेंट वेर एज दि पी वैल्यू वेन कंपेर्ड टू दि ईवनिंग मील इज नाट दट सिग्निफिकेंट वेन कंपेर्ड टू दि ब्रेक्फास्ट एंड दि लंच and uh, this is the bar diagram showing uh, the high postprandial glucose and the high fasting plasma glucose uh, levels which contribute to the high a hba1c and uh, this is called a glycemic triad what is glycemic triad is it's nothing but the combination of fasting plasma glucose and the postprandial glucose and the hba1c Put together are called glycemic triad, and the consequence of delayed insulin initiation. And on the the left hand side you can see the multiple studies showing the IDCI, the A1C achieve, and the present and the improve. The, these are all the studies where the the grey bar is around the, the which represents the fasting plasma glucose, and the blue bar which which represents the post prandial glucose. you can find a clear difference in the uh, idc study that uh, the the uh, uh, fasting was 172 mg per deciliter whereas the post lunch was 253 mg per deciliter and a1c it is correspondingly 194 versus 289 mg per deciliter and the present study the 194 mg per deciliter fasting against the 285 mg of Uh, the bar deciliter of uh, the postprandial and uh, improve it. It is 192 against uh, 279. So you can see all the time the fasting is high and the post lunch is terribly high. That is the 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 unmet demand in the Indian scenario. Maybe maybe because of the uh, the 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 faulty lifestyle uh, modifications and as well as the aggressive therapy. and uh, now the funda is the as far as diabetes is concerned and the hypertension is concerned uh, barring some ex uh, the exceptions like uh, like it is hemorrhagic stroke we don't want to reduce the uh, blood pressure fast okay barring that uh, one two uh, exceptions uh, so every generalized law has some exceptions barring that uh, so uh, we we have a high blood sugar level as well as a high blood pressure level and uh, on the when you take the a1c as a parameter in idci it is 8.56 see the the eda says all the time keep the a1c around or less than 7% so it is 8.56% and according to a1 chief and this is 9.2% and the present study it is 9.23% and uh, the improve is 9.23% so definitely somewhere around 2% above the normal the, the targets or the goals given by the american diabetes association that is 7 you take it as uh, 7 as far as the ada is concerned and you have got lesser values when you do uh, the, the, the compare with this uh, the recommendations of the american college of endocrinology and the double as that is american association for the clinical endocrinologists it is only 6.5 basic the stringent very particular the only problem is if you go want to 
maintain a very stringent uh, A1C, the patient is always, uh, the, the, there is a chance that the patient, uh, they get into hypoglycemia. So you, have to, you have to strike a balance between the, the intensive control as well as the, the uh, incidence of hypoglycemia. So you can see clearly the glycemic trend uh, that is fasting plasma glucose and the post prandial glucose on the HbA1c on the right hand side. And uh, the post prandial hyperglycemia, the inflammatory response actually, when you see the left hand side cartoon, the glucose spikes and the inflammation, they, they lead to the oxidative stress which in turn that leads to whatever be the time, the breakfast or the lunch or the dinner, that leads to the endothelial dysfunction that leads to cardiovascular events actually and the oxidative stress uh, it plays a very pivotal role in the pathogenesis of uh, vascular uh, failure and uh, the endothelial dysfunction that is, uh, uh, after that uh, the next stage is the endothelial dysfunction the initial stage in the development of atherosclerosis which leads to endothelial uh, function which is impaired in diabetes and in IGT as well. That is the reason why uh, this, is, this pre diabetes is so important uh, uh, with regards to the, the high prevalence of uh, the uh, cardiovascular diseases uh, at par with uh, over diabetes. That is the reason we need to go for a universal screening and pick the patients up in the, in the stage of uh, either IFG or IGT that is impaired fasting glucose and the impaired glucose tolerance. We put together our there of one which we call it as uh, the pre-diabetes. So pre-diabetes is the patients in pre-diabetes if they are neglected. The first first thing is they, they proceed on to the over diabetes that is frank diabetes and second thing is even during the pre-diabetes, the incidence of cardiovascular disease and death is very much comparable to the over diabetes. So you need to pick the patients up in the very early period that is after normal glycemia, the pre-diabetes and after that this, the over diabetes or the frank diabetes. So the influence is controlling postprandial hyperglycemia reduces the incidence of myocardial infarction in people with IGT. So this is uh, the postprandial hyperglycemia triggers uh, multiple pathways leading to the cardiovascular complications. So the excessive postprandial hyperglycemia is influenced by several factors that is the high density lipoprotein and the cholesterol catabolism is increased and the increased blood coagulation and the decreased plaque stability and the increased uh, glucose auto oxidation and the decreased fibrinolysis and uh, the increased free fatty acids and the increased insulin resistance uh, and uh, the decreased uh, early phase of uh, insulin secretion that is called FIPR, that is first phase of insulin response is very much uh, reduced and the, the, the triglyceride rich lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein removal is very much decreased and the endothelial function is very much disturbed the, with reduced nitric oxide release. These are all the multiple factors that is interlinked with the, the, the vice versa, the excessive the postprandial, uh, they, they all lead to the excessive postprandial hyperglycemia. All the, this particular excessive postprandial uh, hyperglycemia is interrelated with the multiple factors which I have discussed. And uh, the Indian patient scenario adherence to the lifestyle modification measures. You can see on the left hand side the, the bar diagrams and, and they, 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 uh, the percentage of the patients and uh, the first one is the lack of exercise. See, the 90% the of the patients, they don't exercise at all. So the age, the smoking, the hypertension, the obesity, dyslipidemia, and the positive family history. And uh, the Diab Care India 2011, that is, which involved uh, 6,000 change uh, type 2 diabetes patients, uh, 
and only 54.6 percent that is one in two patients are compliant to dietary advice and only 37.2 percent that is one in three follow advice regarding the exercise the inference is uh, good dietary and exercise practices would uh, help to tackle the hyperglycemia practically few patients can significantly change dietary habits and uh, adapt uh, exercise and uh, now this slide shows uh, can basal insulin alone address all the key realities of uh, the management of type 2 diabetes in indian scenario the answer is absolutely no that is no okay so though the the the, the step wise uh, initiation of insulin starts with the basal insulin initiation of basal insulin along with the existing oids see when you start insulin the the, the the basic fundamentals i am going to touch upon see when the patient is in the maximal dose of three anti oral uh, diabetic drugs they still the patient is not able to maintain a reasonable fasting plasma glucose and the ppc and the hba1c that is high term you have to switch over to the, the insulin maybe the basal insulin or the basal plus insulin or the biphasic premixed uh, the, the the human or the the biphasic uh, premixed uh, the analogs uh, or the uh, basal bolus uh, regimen or the 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 finally the best out of all being the insulin co formulation and the, you i remind you at this particular juncture we have only one insulin co formulation all over the world as and today that is nothing but insulin deglutec and insulin aspart the combination actually so when you see that uh, the basal insulin versus the 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 one shot against the two shots uh, high intake of carbohydrates naturally higher glucose excursions after every meal and high baseline post prandial glucose value in type 2 diabetes from the, the indian scenario versus the others and the delayed initiation of insulin therapy i told you maybe the patients are very very uh, resistant to this particular insulin or the doctor is uh, like in a dilemma whether to initiate or not to initiate maybe uh, lack of knowledge maybe lack of confidence how to maintain how to initiate how to tie up, intensify how to maintain the titrate the, the, the dose of insulin and the higher risk of uh, failure of uh, the basal insulin and the indians with uh, typical uh, indian uh, asian indian phenotype uh, they have got uh, higher uh, the waist circumference higher the total and visceral fat uh, and hyperinsulinemia and likely the insulin resistance and coming on to the last one uh, the need for simple and convenience convenience insulin regime that is uh, intensification the treatment with the same insulin so the indices uh, for holistic choice in the insulin therapy need of an insulin therapy that offers a total control the the, the ideal insulin should have the the following characteristic that it should uh, have the lower incidence of hypoglycemia and the, it should have the meal time flexibility and it should be a very simple regimen and uh, it should be uh, of uh, very good convenience of the device and uh, it should have the better quality of life actually and uh, it should be cost effective also and uh, plus effective glycemic control which is very very important apart from all these uh, factors i have mentioned that is uh, the maintaining the the glycemic triad that is the insulin deglutec and uh, aspart is a prudent choice undoubtedly and coming to the second part of our uh, agenda that is uh, insulin co formulation let's go to the introductory part of insulin co formulation actually so this is uh, the the insulin deglutec aspart the world's only one and uh, co formulation insulin from known adis that is this particular uh, insulin deglutec and aspart the 70% of this particular combination has got the ultra long acting insulin deglutec that is and the 
30 percent has got the the short acting insulin aspect that is called the, the IDEC asp actually you can clearly see the IDEC dihexamers on the left hand side and the you can see the insulin aspect hexamers on the right hand side the two insulin components they do not interact in the solution and in the subcutaneous tissue even after you inject into the tummy into the fat uh, the, that never uh, the, the has got this uh, this uh, interaction uh, in the, in the, the, the between this insulin deglutic and uh, the insulin aspect uh, thereby retaining their own individual properties this is the uh, the unique uh, feature of this particular insulin co-formulation and uh, the combination of uh, quick release uh, uh, prandial insulin with the slow release basal insulin so now we we can see the insulin uh, degladec uh, and the aspect co-formulation and once it is given injected into the subcutaneous tissue it divides into insulin degladec and insulin aspect insulin degladec all the time in the form of dihexamer and insulin aspect uh, in the form of hexamer actually and uh, later on uh, the phenol diffuses quickly and uh, the insulin dihexamers uh, link up via single side chain uh, contacts to the to form the long multi hexamers and uh, in the subcutaneous depot we see that insulin monomers are replaced released uh, into the circulation rapidly and the zinc diffuses slowly causing the individual the, the insulin degladec hexamers to deassemble releasing the monomers very slowly and the next slide the once daily insulin degladec aspect the distinct prandial and the basal glucose lowering effects you can see the the uh, navy blue line which represents the insulin degladec aspect given in the dose of 0.6 units per kilogram body weight and uh, the red one is orange one is the basal component and the green one is the basal component you can very clearly see the the, the meal time uh, control with the insulin aspect uh, and the flat and stable 24 hour control with the insulin degladec this is the unique feature which controls uh, the the meal time as well as the basal 24 hour control uh, with this particular uh, insulin degladec aspect and uh, the steady state concept uh, for insulin degladec as with uh, BID dosing. Suppose you start with this, the, the once a day, the, 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 you have to start with at least 10 units of this particular uh, insulin degladec aspect and it should be preferably be given with the, the largest meal of the day. The, suppose the breakfast is the largest, you can give it uh, with the breakfast. Suppose the lunch is the largest meal you can give it with the lunch suppose the dinner is the largest you, you should need to have an interaction with the patient and find out uh, which is which is the largest meal out of all the three meals the breakfast lunch and the dinner and if it doesn't work out then we go for the bid doses on the second thing is when when the the do dose of uh, this particular single uh, injectable dose uh, exceeds 30 to 40 units and still you don't find the result then, then it is high time uh, you, you have to uh, make sure that the patient has got uh, more than two large meals and you have to make this the OD the BD and you can clearly see the, the rhizotic uh, the meal time control with the insulin aspect, the two times uh, that is the, the, the may, maybe the the uh, lunch and the dinner or the breakfast and the lunch, uh, whatever it may be, and the uh, the the green shows uh, the flat and stable basal coverage uh, of the insulin degladec uh, throughout uh, the day. That is uh, uh, 24 hour control at steady state. Uh, the glucose lowering effect of degludec component is similar regardless of the, whether the insulin degludec aspect is administered once or twice daily as long as the total daily dose is unchanged. And the patient profiles 
that is the ideal patients for insulin degloidic aspirate initiation so the patients who are uncontrolled on the oids that's what i said that is a stage where we call it the secondary drug failure where you use the maximum dose of three oral anti diabetic drugs and still the patient is is not at controlled and that is the 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 best ideal candidate for initiation of insulin degloidic aspirate and need for safety and flexibility at initiation and uh, next is the uncontrolled patients on the basal insulin and uh, need for flexibility and an acceptable weight gain and uh, an acceptable hypoglycemia and uh, the last one is uh, the safety concerns actually so the elderly and the frail they are the the patients who can be uh, initiated with this uh, uh, the insulin degloidic and aspirate very safely and the patient suffering from hepatic impairment maybe the chronic liver disease with uh, the, the, the 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 cirrhosis uh, or the hepatocellular carcinoma whatever it may be so and the renal impairment that is maybe the patient uh, in the esrd or the eskd end stage renal disease or the end stage kidney disease or uh, the the fasting condition and the erratic meal patterns these are all the conditions where uh, you can initiate uh, the insulin degloidic uh, insulin and uh, continuing that uh, the other profiles the patient profiles uh, if the patient is on the premix insulin od or bad or the basal plus uh, the, the poor fasting glucose and the need for flexibility and the recurrent hypoglycemia these are all the indications for idac aspirin initiation and uh, finally uh, who is on basal bolus uh, an acceptable variability and recurrent hypoglycemia as need for flexibility and coming to the last part of our this thing the practical recommendations of insulin co formulation actually so the practical considerations uh, that is uh, the multiple uh, the, the 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 uh, uh, practical considerations are initiation flexibility titration intensification dosing of uh, the oids and uh, the special situations and the delivery device the administer with the largest meal of the day this is the funda you have to the the, the take home message of this particular entire uh, the, my talk is uh, the the administration of insulin degloidic idec asp is idec asp should be with the largest meal of the day that is spending some 5 minutes with the patient you can make it out which is the largest meal either the break, breakfast lunch or dinner you can start with that and uh, initiate uh, this particular idec gas with the uh, 10 units odi and administer with any major meal that's what i said and uh, ad odi administration uh, of idec gas uh, with the most carbohydrate uh, heavy meal of the day and uh, can be given with uh, different meals on the different days also because of the flexibility this is the longest uh, the the insulin degloidic is the 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 longest basal insulin on the earth actually and uh, if it is od this is the on the left hand side if it is to be given in the bid doses that is administer uh, uh, idec as per bid with the two most carbohydrate heavy meals of the day and uh, meal size and the postprandial glucose response should uh, dictate the ratio of the two doses it doesn't uh have to be a 1 is to 1 split so here i mind you that uh, the mere initiation of idea gas is not going to do anything without uh, the lifestyle modification actually that is medical nutrition therapy plays an integral part in managing this particular the, the diabetes actually uh, likewise the dash diet which is very very important to to not only to Uh, control the hypertension but also to they uh, the, the control the metabolic syndrome or to re re reduce the incidence of cardiovascular disease or the death dash diet that is dietary approaches to stop hypertension plays a vital role 
and uh, don't be under impression that only it works for hypertension. It works for the various conditions which I have mentioned. And uh, the practical recommendations, uh, flexible uh, dosing time for flexible schedules, that is, uh, the flexible dosing is IDEC-ASP is suitable for people who have difficulty injecting at a consistent time each day. So even the seven days you you inject on different different times of the day in a week, like the shift workers or the people traveling across the time zones or the people are uh, relying on home visits for their injections. So the blood sugars are meticulously maintained basically because of the, the long acting insulin degludec and the, the uh, rapid acting, the short acting, the insulin aspect. So, and the practical recommendations, uh, the weekly titration using a simple algorithm, the patient has the, uh, the above uh, the uh, 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 fasting plasma glucose target, uh, increase the insulin always by 2 units, incrementing the insulin is always by adding additional 2 2 units and uh, the Fasting plasma glucose is a target, so maintain the same dose. If the patient has got uh, the lower levels or the patient has got uh, the incidence of IPO, reduce the insulin by 2 units. And uh, this is the, the once daily IDEC-ASP dose, uh, that is with the, the, and then the major meal, uh, the blood glucose considered for titration will be uh, fasting plasma glucose and BAD insulin degludic asp dose. Uh, and the, the, the pre-breakfast or the pre-lunch, it should be the, the, the blood glucose uh, which is uh, to, to be titrated uh, is the pre-dinner. And if it is the pre-dinner uh, BID IDEGASP dose, uh, you need to monitor the particularly the pre-breakfast, that is fasting. And intensification of uh, IDEGASP. So, IDEGASP OD can be made BID. Other insulin regimens like uh, the, the, you can go for this IDEC-ASP when the patient is on other insulin regimens what I said uh, starting from the basal insulin to basal plus to the basal bolus or the biphasic premixed human or the biphasic premixed analogs whatever it may be the patient is uh, got challenges with all the multiple combinations and multiple types of the initiation of insulin you can all the time the best option will be the, the insulin degludec aspect but I, I i need to tell you that the the when the cost and the affordability is not a problem this is the only one clause i put before telling everything because this is little bit costlier but it is cost effective when compared to the complications of diabetes because this is going to maintain absolute uh, the euglycemia whereby you can minimize the complications. When you, the, the cost benefit ratio, when you, when you want to calculate in that particular terms also, the, the cost of the complications is uh, uh, more than 100 to 1000 times of this, the, 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 when you compare this, uh, the investment, what you put it on this particular IDEC aspect actually. And the co-administration with other anti-diabetic medications, this is the greatest advan advantage of this particular, this thing. This, this can be given with uh, all the drugs you have the, 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 the entire portfolio except uh, the thiazolidine dians that is the Indian scenario the pyoglitazone is one the only one thing that should not be combined with this particular insulin. So, so that uh, both of them may precipitate uh, a volume overloaded state like that may, the, the patient may have a sudden acute heart failure or something else may happen and if you don't properly assess the patient. So, this particular insulin, uh, the IDEC uh, ASP uh, is compatible with metformin, uh, compatible with sulfonylurea, compatible with the DP4 inhibitors, compatible with uh, alpha glucosidase inhibitors and uh, the SGLT2 inhibitors and the GLP1 receptor agonists. Uh, whatever you take, even the bromocryptin, whatever the molecule you take, it is very compatible. And only thing is you have to be little bit uh, cautious when, when you are using it with uh, sulfonylureas, you need to reduce the dose of sulfonylurea so that uh, the, the patient does not get into the L2 or L3 hypoglycemia that is level 3 hypoglycemia which is dangerous and which requires uh, 
this thing uh, usually the idea gas co formulation never never leads to this particular uh, the level 3 uh, hypoglycemia but you have to be little bit cautious when the patient is on sulfonylureas and you are adding this particular idea gas insulin you need to cut down the dose like the patient is on 2 milligram of glimepiride, you better come down to 1 milligram of glimepiride and initiate so that the patient will not get into the hypoglycemic episodes. And intensification from insulin the idea gasp once daily to the BID doses. They went to intensify the postprandial glucose excursions after 2 meals in, in one week and the excursions unresponsive to diet manipulation and when the OD dose is more than 30 to 40 units, I have told you prior to the, this uh, slide also, when the OD dose increases more than 30 to 40 units a day, that is high time, you have to uh, switch over to the BID dose. So, how to intensify the total daily dose uh, split over two meals with the uh, greatest carbohydrate content and the ratio based on uh, the relative carbohydrate content uh, and the postprandial excursions. Switching uh, to idea from other insulin regimens actually. So if it is from basal or the premix OD, you can switch over to idea gas OD or BID. At the basal bar the premix uh, BID, you can switch over to the idea gas BID or OD. The basal plus bolus, that is basal bolus, uh, you can switch over to idea gas uh, individualized as per the requirements. So switching needs to be individualized based on careful consideration of the basal bolus doses and uh, close blood glucose monitoring is very much required. That is the reason we need to encourage our patients for SMBG that is self-monitoring of blood glucose as well as the, the home monitoring of blood pressure also. The co-administration of uh, insulin aspect uh, with other anti-diabetic drugs as I said uh, idagasp can be used in combination with most of the OIDs that is the concomitant use with the SGL2 inhibitors and uh, the concomitant use with sulfonylureas. Uh, and uh, the concomitant use with the GLP-1 receptor agonist and uh, no additional considerations uh, when combining uh, idea gas with the metformin and alpha glucosidase inhibitors or type DPP-4 inhibitor. That's what I said, uh, barring the glitazones, that is the only one glitazone we have is this particular pyglitazone and now uh, off late uh, one more molecule has come the low, low big glitazone but okay, we know about uh, the everything about uh, the, 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 the plus points uh, and the minus points about the biocleat zone. It's, it's a very, very beneficial drug, very, very effective. I all the time uh, I advocate uh, the, the, the usage of uh, this particular biocleat zone, but uh, use it very judiciously, use it very cautiously, and don't put it to a patient who is in a already volume overloaded state. But for the heart failure and the incidence of fractures and the incidence of uh, the, the uh, anemia, pyglitazone is a wonderful drug, wonderful drug. Idea gas in special situations like elderly people, I said uh, it, it should be given because uh, you have got the strongest evidence like uh, post hoc analysis of uh, two phase uh, three trials and uh, and very low calorie reduced carbohydrate or erratic diet can be given the randomized treat to target trial is the evidence based medicine we have the hepatic and the renal impairment the intensive glucose monitoring needed in chronic renal or hepatic illness the similar pharmacokinetic profiles of insulin degladic and insulin aspect with or without renal or hepatic impairment and the only condition where it should not be used is pregnancy every time i make it very very clear insulin degludic asp is not a drug of choice for pregnant woman but you can give the plain insulin aspert and the insulin glulysin these are the two the analogs which can be used during this particular 
that's a totally different topic okay and the convenient and uh, the patient friendly insulin pen devices of uh, insulin degluric de and asp you can see on the left hand side the usanthro pen and and the left hand and the right hand side you can see the no pen for uh, the flex stretch a disposable insulin pen uh, no push button extension unique injection mechanism very low dose force uh, actually the elderly also can use it uh, a single click will deliver all the, the insulin at a single shot the only thing is you need to wait for at least 30 to 60 seconds so that the entire insulin that is pushed once should go into the subcutaneous tissue and the end of dose click and the accurate and consistent dosing actually these are the advantages of the flex touch so the patient has got some problems with the money and is not able to uh, afford a, this particular uh, the flex stretch insulin he can as well go for the pen fills or the cartridges which are available and where, where, which they, the, the, all the cartridges all the starting from the actrapid or the insulatad or the, 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 the mixtard even the novamix or the rhizodic whatever be the, the, the product of novamix will fit into no pen 3 or no pen 4 4 is the latest one so let's talk something about no pen 4 it's a durable insulin pen accurate uh, the dose delivery for more than 5 years i've got patients using this particular no pain 3 for the last 20 years uh, there are no problem at all even the the the, the, the no pain 4 is much much advanced when compared to the uh, no pain 3 actually the low dose force to inject easy dose adjustment uh, easy to read dose scale the quick and simple to use and uh, always i say that okay the only minus point i find with all this uh, the 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 devices, uh, the, the, either the Isanthro pens or the snow pen, the uh, uh, three or four, you need to uh, waste at least two to five units of insulin with every pen fill cartridge or with the, uh, the, the uh, Isanthro device. So that is the only one point uh, I would like to highlight at this particular junction. So the I take as a prudent choice for Indian scenario because it has got the uh, the lower incidence of hypoglycemia, it has got the meal time flexibility, and the simple regime and the convenient uh, convenience of the device and the better quality of life and it is cost effective and uh, added to that uh, the effective glycemic control you can you can control the glycemic triad that is fbg ppg and the hba1c and uh, you can you can see this uh, the, the the cartoon the insulin uh, ida casp has got the convenience has got the simplicity has got the efficacy safety and the quality of life and the flexibility and uh, thank you so much for your patient listening i i once again request all the uh, doctors if you have any query please uh, uh, 